Great. Welcome, everyone. Okay. So, photo storage and organization. So, objectives today. Um, we're going to identify the best method of storing your photo library. We're going to discover different ways of organizing your photos. And most importantly, find a solution that works for you. And I think you'll find throughout this presentation that there's a breadth that's very broad and, you know, they're Everyone has their own situation with how they organize their photos and where they have their files. And you know, there's a different solution for everyone. All right, so the first thing you need to know is how much storage do you need? And uh, for that, the first question you should ask yourself is what device were most of my photos taken from? Was it a phone? Was it a digital camera? Was it a film camera? Um, but this is mostly digital stuff, so. Uh, most pictures are taken from a smartphone are around 2.5 megabytes per picture. Um, and I have a little chart down here that kind of gives you like a, a measurement table of how many megabytes or gigabyte and so forth conversion chart. Um, so it's about two and a half megabytes per picture. Um, but as cameras improve, you know, every year new cameras come out, look even better, um, higher megapixel counts and this HDR, uh, these file sizes can get way bigger than 2.5 megabytes. They can double or even go higher than that. Um, and even pictures taken from dedicated cameras, so like your DLSR, um, your digital cameras, they can vary in size. Uh, so when handling regular picture files, which are JPEGs, a good rule of thumb usually is that the file size of the picture will be half the camera's megapixel count. So if your camera is 12 megapixels, then it's gonna be about six, six megabytes per picture. Um, so if you know like the megapixel count of your camera, try to divide that by half and that'll give you a good idea of how many, how big each of your photos will be. And so using that rule of thumb, one, gig, one gigabyte is around 500 smartphone photos, give or take. Um, like I said, this number can vary based on a few things, but that's usually the rule of thumb. Okay. So with that in mind, uh, when looking around at cloud storage devices, that's like the, the new, new thing is cloud storage. Um, and this is a type of storage. This is just one type of storage, but this is um, storage that's stored somewhere else, not on your computer, um, that's accessed through the internet. Think of it as like a, a storage unit where you have things, um, you can get to it uh, easily depending on where it is, but it's, it's not at your house, it's not taking up space at your house. Um, so for, photos stored here won't take up space in any of your connected devices. Um, and you can access photos from any device that has the, the cloud storage app or even on the, on the internet, you can just go on the website and look at all the stuff there. Um, just keep in mind though, that you do need internet to access these photos. So if you don't have internet at home or you have um, not great cell service, it might be hard to to connect and, and look at all your photos. Um, some examples of the most popular storage device, uh, cloud storage services are uh, iCloud Photos, which are for Apple devices mostly. Uh, there's Microsoft's OneDrive, which is included in Windows 10 computers. Google Photos, if you have a Gmail account, you have Google Photos built in. And then there's Dropbox, which is kind of the original um, cloud storage service, but it's kind of, it's, you know, there's been a lot of competitors since then. So a lot of newer, uh, and in some ways better alternatives since then. And this chart over here kind of shows the, uh, so every, every cloud service has a free tier and then a, usually a paid tier that has like the max capacity of, uh, that you can buy per month for storage. So um, the most would be Google Photos, which is 15 gigabytes that comes with every, every Gmail account. And then of course, Dropbox is the least. Um, it's, it's important to note that while iCloud, Microsoft, these are all built into these associated devices, Apple devices, Windows 10 computers. Um, if you have an Apple device or if you have a, a computer at home that's not a Mac or Apple, you can still access iCloud photos. You can just go on iCloud.com and access it from your computer. It doesn't have to be on an Apple device. The same thing goes for the other, other services. Google Photos, you don't have to have Android. You can go on your iPhone, you can go on your computer and just go on the website or download the app. Uh, 
So it doesn't really matter what service you choose, they're, they're compatible with every, every device that, that you may have. So uh, another alternative and one that I think everyone is a little more familiar with is just physical storage. So this is like flashcards for your camera, uh, SD cards, USB sticks, stuff like that. Uh, of course, doesn't require internet connection to access. Um, it's much faster of a process to put, if you have a big photo library, it's much faster to just transfer all those pictures onto, the, onto one of these um, devices. Um, they'll work on any computer, just like, just like cloud storage will. Um, and of course, SD cards are convenient if you're familiar with digital cameras, um, because usually digital cameras use SD cards to, uh, to store their photos. So you can just take that out of your camera and put it into the computer and then import all your pictures that way. Um, so if you're thinking about shopping for like a, a hard drive to store your photos on, you might have seen things called like regular hard disk drives, HDDs, or solid state drives, SSDs. Those are a little bit newer than the um, old hard disk drives. So what's the difference between those two? So um, when it comes to these, it, uh, hard disk drives are a bit slower uh, when transferring data and searching for stuff. Um, they're also more susceptible to data corruption and failure due to uh, there's like an actual spinning disk in there and it, there's a lot of moving parts in these drives because um, it actually has to read the disk and all that. Um, but the upside is that they're much cheaper and for a cheaper available and much larger capacity. So we're talking like multiple terabytes, like thousands and thousands of photos uh, that you can store on those things for relatively cheap. Um, on the other hand, solid state drives are much, much faster. Um, they're typically more portable. A lot of times like your flash drive is basically a, a solid state, an SD card is basically a solid state drive. Uh, they can come in much smaller sizes and they're way more reliable because they don't have any moving parts. Uh, there's nothing moving in there. Um, but on the downside, they're typically more expensive um, and more expensive and you, you there's not as big of a capacity um, usually on these for the same price. So it's a, it's a, you know, pros and cons, which one you would rather have. It depends on how big your photo library is. So in most cases, hard drives work well as a backup um, if your other devices get break or get lost. And having one large capacity drive instead of like a a bunch of separate smaller drives is better for convenience. I know a lot of people have like, like dozens of, of uh, SD cards for all their cameras. So they just keep filling them up so they buy more. And it's just like, you don't know what's on which and it's, it's hard to wrap your head around. So if you just get one big drive, hard drive, and then just take all those photos from each flash drive and just put them on this one drive, it's much easier to you know, consolidate everything that way. It's much more convenient. So any questions? Do you have any questions in the chat? Yes, we do. We have a question yeah. about size estimates for videos taken on iPhones or other phones. So video size. Yeah. Videos. I mean, this, this is mostly photos, but I can tell you about video. It does take up quite a bit of space. It depends on what resolution you're recording in. So um, 4K versus 1080p, that can have a massive file size difference. Um, and if you're recording in 4K, we're talking like, I'd say for like a one minute video, a couple of gigabytes maybe. Um, so it, it, it adds up pretty fast. Um, it also depends on like, if you convert, it depends on where your video is coming from, usually smartphones the file sizes aren't too big because they can like compress the file down to smaller sizes. Um, but if you're taking like with a like a, a video camera, a dedicated video camera, those file sizes can get pretty big, pretty fast. So if you have a lot of HD videos or 4K videos, I would suggest opting for a little bigger of a um, storage capacity. Yeah, and I'll chime in and say um, that is definitely something we'll try to get in writing. That's a great question. In mm. general, videos are recorded, and this is not 4K video or 8K video, but um, 
29 frames per second. So if you think of every second of video being about 29 different pictures, um, that's just kind of a general rule of thumb that you can go by. Yeah. And, um, I would also, if you're taking a lot of videos on your smartphone, I would check to see the settings of, of what you're recording at. Um, that can make a huge difference. Like Casey said, 29 frames per second. Um, sometimes phones will automatically just have you recording at 60 frames a second, which with her analogy, that's that's twice the amount of pictures per second that you're that you're capturing. So I would check your phone settings to see what you're recording at and maybe lower some of them so the file doesn't become too big too fast. Yeah. Awesome. Good question. Thank you. Yeah, that's a good question. Any more? Uh, that's all we have in the chat for now. So, oh, just so you know, um, this is going to, this next topic will be about organization. Um, so we're going to do it for both Mac and PC, Windows computers. Um, we're going to start with Windows computers um, for those who use them, and then we're going to switch to Mac after that. So um, I'll just say, you know, if you don't have a Mac, just sit out for, for this one, or if you do, sit out for the other one, um, just to let you know. All right, so we're going to start out with Windows. Um, if you choose to use your Windows PC to organize your pictures as your main, main place to organize them, uh, creating folders to put your pictures in is a great place to start. Think of it like a filing cap, like where you store all your documents and stuff like that, um, like a manila folder, basically. That's And you can see on the on the screenshot there, that's kind of what they look like. It's a great uh, visual analogy. Um, so making sure to have your library in one place will make it easier to manage down the road. Like, what I talked about with the flashcards um, or the SD cards, having like a bunch of different ones and you don't know what's on each one, it's like, it can be a headache to try to wrap your head around it. Um, so I recommend usually saving to the pictures directory and you can see down here, it's it's highlighted right there. Um, so that's on your on your computer when you open File Explorer on your desktop, there's a pictures directory and that's, that's there to so store all of your pictures on just have like one place where they all are. Um, how do you make a folder? So one, open File Explorer on your desktop, navigate to your pictures directory where that arrow is, and you click on new folder right there. And it's gonna ask you to name the folder. You can type that, you know, type the date range of when those pictures, all those pictures in that folder are. Or if it's like pictures of someone, you name it that. Just so you have everything in its own folder, uh, all organized neatly. Um, Windows 10 also has a native photos app that's just simply called photos uh, that will automatically scan your pictures directory and display all the pictures stored there. Um, so that pictures directory I was talking about earlier that I had highlighted here, um, it's going to scan that place and just put all your pictures into one program. Basically, it's going to sort also by sort your photos by the date they were taken um, automatically which is a great way. If you remember when you took that picture, you can search for that date and they'll show up. Um, if you have pictures that are not in the pictures directory and are on a camera, you can select the import option at the top right corner and a camera wizard will pop up where you can select which pictures to import. Um, uh, that's of course with a, a USB cable connected to the camera. Did we get another question in the chat? I think I saw, saw one. Um, there's a couple questions, but okay. did you want to pause now? Yeah, we'll pause now because we're okay. doing Max next. Okay, cool. So we have one question about how to move photos from the cloud and iPhone to a Windows 10 PC. Okay. But I think you might have just covered that with your import button. Yeah, so um, I would wonder, are they are they stored on your iPhone? Otherwise, are, in other words, if you go on the Photos app, are they there for you to look at or are they only on iCloud? So that's a different process. Um, if they are on just your phone, where you can access them, if you have a, a lightning, the charging cable for your iPhone, lightning cable, you can plug into, um, you can plug into the, you can plug into your, um, sorry, your computer and uh, yeah, click import and your phone will show up as a camera to import pictures from. 
if not, you can, there's usually a, um, where it has the windows, right below the pictures where there's the windows tab, windows C, um, there's usually a, an iPhone drive that'll show up and that's where all your pictures will be. And you can just drag and drop into your pictures category to move them over. And I'm gonna jump a little ahead, Zach, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I will just say, this is something we usually talk about at the end of all of our classes, but just so everybody sure. knows, um, we do offer free 30 minute technology appointments. So that way we can sit down with you and your device and your computer, and we're, we're happy to help you walk through that process too. Um, sure. These classes are kind of a general informational, uh, but we do know that topics like this, like we have very specific questions. Right. And so that's why we, we love to be able to follow up with you in person um, on some of those questions. Yeah, for sure. Spoiler um, alert. <laughs> yeah. Any other ones? Yeah, there was another question in the chat box. Um, I'm just going to read it to you. So it says clarification. Generally, all photos taken on Android or iPhone are same file type, like JPEG versus question mark. If you rename um, the photo file name, but nothing else, can you upload and download without worry on photo, phone, or computer? Um, I believe iPhone, so JPEG is usually like the, the smallest file type. Um, I know iPhones, the file type for iPhones is PNG, which is a little less compressed. They might be a little bigger, um, but you should be able to download, download from your, I think, yeah, if you go on iCloud on your computer, they'll show up as PNGs, which is, I mean, you can open that kind of file in anything, uh, any kind of photo program. Um, JPEG and PNG, they're, they're pretty common. Um, so there shouldn't be any worry when downloading stuff. And, and just so you know, if you if you move stuff around from cloud to, to phone and back, it's not gonna like delete off of one device and move to the other, they're gonna copy each other. So there's no no worry about like getting rid of something on your device. Um, and I'll go ahead and chime in and just repeat the fact that mm -hmm. some of this will depend on your settings, yeah. um, like Zach has already mentioned, but you know, again, we'd love to kind of sit down with you in person to see if we can figure out what your goal is, like what you're hoping to do, and then yeah. what steps to take to get you there. Yeah, these are all really good questions. Yeah. Any more? I think that's it for now. Okay. But yeah, feel free to keep them coming, guys. Thank you so sure. much. All right, so Mac computers. Um, but if you own a Mac computer, all pictures are automatically compiled on your computer system library, which can be accessed using the Photos app. Um, so it's a little, a little different than how Windows works. Um, photo, Mac, photos on Mac are kind of all stored onto one file and they're, they're all just presented on the Photos app. So you can't really access them, access them like you would on a Windows computer. Um, you can only really view them on the Photos app which makes, them, makes organization a little more tricky, but if you're someone that only uses Apple, you know, iPhone and Mac, then it's, it's a little more, it's seamless. But if you're like on a Windows computer and a Mac and an iPhone, it's a little more confusing. Um, but for, for those of you that it works for, that's great. Um, so creating albums on a Mac. Uh, so this is what you do, you open photos on your dock, um, let, top, you would select file, uh, top menu bar, select new album from the drop down and rename. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna quickly go to the next slide to show you what I mean. So where I have highlighted here, file, uh, you can see the first option there is new album. You're gonna click that and it's gonna pop up to name your new album. Um, and you see on the side here, it says my albums, they'll show up on your sidebar along with a separate album containing any photos you favorite. So like your most favorite photos, you there's a little heart icon, you click that and they show up in their own album as favorite. Okay. Um, just like with Windows, photos are automatically sorted by the date they are taken. Um, if they're taken with an iPhone using the camera app on an iPhone, they'll also be sorted by location. 
uh, where they are taken. So it's another way of searching through your, your library. Um, as far as importing photos on Mac, you're gonna uh, open the photos on your doc, select file like before, you know, select the import option, drop down menu and uh, choose the picture and pictures you wish to import. You're gonna click review for import to confirm your selection. There you go. <clears throat> okay. Lastly, uh, tags. Um, so this is like the last topic of we're going to talk about today. Uh, tags are single words that are assigned to an image file that describe the content depicted in the picture in order to make it easier to search for. Um, kind of tricky of a concept to understand, but um, there. So when you click on an image or click on an image, there there can be words associated with it that are included in the file that you can type in. Um, you can either do it yourself or have it done automatically. So if like a, a dog's in the picture, you can just type dog to describe what's in there. Um, the name of the person that's in the picture, you can type the city where it was in, like Stuart. Um, you can have multiple tags for a single picture. Um, and it just makes it so that when you search for the picture in a search box, uh, those words that you type will, the pictures that have those same words will show up. So all photos that you take are automatically tagged with the date and time in which they were taken, like I said. Um, that's just across the board. They always, they always have that information in them when they were, when they were taken. Um, they can be manually attached to each picture or they can be automatically done through some AI uh, detection. And they can detect things such as objects and animals and assign tags based on that. Uh, sometimes it's not, doesn't work the best. Like, most things with AI, but um, it's getting there. And it's, it is a little more seamless than having to do it for each picture. That's pretty, pretty tedious. Do we have a, a question come up? Looks like we have uh... Um, Sorry, a couple of questions about, yeah. back about the Mac thing. Okay. Do you want sure. them now? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, Okay, question number one. On Mac, mm -hmm. when I import pictures from my iPhone, does it only take photos not previously imported? No, um, so you can, it can access any photos that are already on, already on the iPhone. It doesn't matter if you've already imported them, you can import them as many times as you, as you want. It basically treats the iPhone as another camera. Okay, sorry, I'm making a note on that one. Uh, okay. And then on Mac, when I create an album, is there a way to delete this photo from the general file so that they remain only in the new folder? Hmm. Hmm. That's a good question. I'll have to uh, get back to you on that one. Might have to, okay, I'll make a note on it, Zach, too. Yeah. And these are good questions too that we can questions. send them in writing to you and that usually like the apple website has a really great step-by-step yeah. -step instruction to show you how to do it from home especially yeah especially for photos on mac because mm -hmm. i know it's it can be a little confusing with how they store the files on photos um, they're not really all there for you to see so as far as deleting just one i'll have to check how that works. But yeah, that is a good question. And I, oops, sorry, another question. Okay. Cool. <laughs> this is a good one. <laughs> um, why does Mac have both pictures and photos files? That is a very good question. Um, I believe that the pictures file, like the pictures directory in the in Finder, it works like Windows does, like I was explaining earlier. Um, but I don't believe Photos works with that. Um, I think it does like the first time you set it up, it'll scan that that library, but it, it then it creates its own fi separate file with Photos, and it kind of converts all of them to that format. Um, and yeah, the reason I'm is, chuckling is because really the answer is it's like an Apple thing because um, yeah. you're asking why um, 
you know, inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> it's it's a yeah. good question. It is a good question. Yeah. Um, but I can give some more, I could probably give some more clarification on that. Um, trying to wrap your head around how photos work on Macs is, mm -hmm. it's not, you know, not for the faint of heart, mm -hmm. I should say. <laughs> so, but yeah, that's a, that's a good question. We'll get back to you on that one. A little more clarification. All right. So get some more. Yeah. Just a thank you and looking forward okay. to seeing the answers in writing. So no yeah. other questions, but I will just chime in and say for anybody that it has never heard the term AI before, it just means artificial intelligence. Yeah. Yeah. So it's basically a computer um, that can go through your pictures. And um, I might go into this a little more depth um, if I, when we do this class again, but uh, you can actually train it to recognize people that are in your pictures. A little creepy, but it, uh, it can work. It, it recognizes who's in the pictures and knows who it is and it'll give them, give them that name as a tag. So when you search for that person's name, pictures of them will come up. Um, so it's it's a good alternative to, um, and I'll go to the, this, since we're talking about automatically tagging, it's a good alternative to putting everything in its own folder. Um, if you get it, you can get everything automatically tagged, then all you have to do is just search for the what you want in your library and those pictures will show up. Um, especially if, if you have a lot of pictures, you're talking like 6,000. I mean, how would you even begin to sort all those into folders? Uh, that's where automatically tagging comes in. It's just for your convenience, basically. Um, so a majority of the most popular photo storage pr providers offer some, some form of automatic tagging. Uh, so Windows 10, Google Photos, and iCloud to some degree. Um, like I said, it, it, iCloud only works with pictures that are taken on an iPhone with the camera app. Um, but Windows 10 and Google Photos will retroactively. So for your older pictures, no matter where they're taken, it'll scan them and, and assign tags based on what, they, what it sees in the pictures. Um, Dropbox unfortunately does not offer tagging whatsoever. You can't even add tags manually on Dropbox. There's just no, no option there. <laughs> All right, so. And if I can chime oh, in, Zach, just. Yeah quickly sorry um just to say tagging is one of those things that will make your life so much easier in the future um you know maybe you used to have like a perfectly organized folder you take a trip you put all your photo fo photos from that trip into the folder next time you do something you save all your pictures in that folder well nowadays we take pictures all the time and when we use the default import features that zach showed to us um, they tend to organize it by date. So Windows pulls it in by, well, actually you have a few choices. Um, so, but generally it's by date. Yeah. What tagging allows you to do, like Zach was saying, is whether you remember the date or where you were, if you search for things like bridge, or sometimes I'll take a picture of a book that I really like, or someone told me about that I wanna remember to read and I can search my pictures for book and it'll show me all the pictures I've taken of a book. And it might be books on a bookshelf. It might be an individual book. Uh, but that's just kind of how, you know, tagging, especially this automated tagging feature could be extremely helpful for you trying to locate pictures that, you've, that you know you've taken in the past but can't quite put your fingers on. Right. Yeah, and you might, you might not even remember the, the name of the person in the picture, but yes. you remember where it was taken. So you look mm -hmm. up every picture where you know, on that, on that specific trip, and then you find that, that person. So yeah, it can be really convenient when you have a huge photo library. So at the end of the day, there is no one right way to organize your photos. Um, so you have to find the solution that works for you, uh, depending on your situation. Uh, so you ask yourself, where are all my photos located? Do I have them on a computer? Do I mostly take them on a phone, on a digital camera? Um, and what devices do I usually go to to look at my photos? Is it just on my iPhone? Do I have like a, a big hard drive full of photos on my computer, a bunch of flashcards? Um, and how much work am I willing to put into organization? Um, so that, that can be putting all your photos into its own folder on your computer and then tagging each one manually, typing in 
tags. I mean, that, that's what would take the most work. It's very tedious. Um, but like I said, there's other options like automatic tagging that do all the work for you. So it's just how, how much work are you willing to put in and, and where all your photos are located. So summary, uh, we learned how to determine how much storage is needed for a photo library, roughly. Um, different storage methods serve different needs and have their pros and cons. Uh, we learned methods of sorting pictures for better organizing on Windows and Mac computers. And we learned the concept of tagging photos. All right. Um, so if you want to hear more about, um, you know, online safety, these iCloud classes and stuff like that, or these I iCloud services, sorry. Uh, there's going to be a class on online safety and privacy, uh, Friday, July 23rd. And like it says here, this class will teach you some simple methods for keeping your information safe while on the web. So being, if you have uh, cloud services, there is some, some risk there of uh, you know, privacy and safety. So this is a good follow-up class to that. Uh, so we'll cover strong passwords, how to avoid phishing scams, and how to generally protect your personal information on that. And registration is required for that. All right. So if you have any questions, we do have uh, LinkedIn Learning uh, with lynda.com. So there's uh, courses on all sorts of things, technology or non-technology. And there's plenty of classes and content based on, on this, organizing photo organization, stuff like that, where you can learn a little bit more. And that's free with library card number. And uh, I just want to say thank you. Um, so if you want to learn more, there's more, like I said, that uh, online safety and privacy, there's more uh, classes online, just go to this link right here and, and let us know what you liked and what else you wanna learn. Uh, these questions are really good feedback actually on what, uh, what else we could add to this and other topics we can teach in the future. Yeah, this is a topic that we've wanted to cover. Sorry, Zach, before you go, I have, there is more in the chat box, but just sure. as a general note, um, this is a topic we've wanted to cover for years, but, and so we, excited to finally get to do it, but then when we sat down to do it, it's such a big topic. And so this is just a general high level overview, but yeah, these questions will really help us kind of yeah. cover the topic in a bit more detail in the future. Right. So I have yes. a question in the chat. Mm -hmm. um, are there other photo management apps that would make sense to consider? Yes, and in fact, I do have an article um, online that covers some other a um, little more like pro pro side photo managing apps a um, little less known ones like photo bucket and Flickr, mm. uh, stuff like that so yeah there are of course other options to consider um, there's even software that uh, that can automatically tag for you um, so if you don't like the way Google Photos is doing it, for instance, if they're getting things wrong, there's other options to even do that. And it would it works on just a regular computer. But the thing about automatic tagging is it's mostly for high cloud or uh, cloud services. So if you don't want to use any of that stuff and you just have stuff on a hard drive, but you want to organize, there's also other programs that can do that for you on a hard drive, basically, and automatically sort the tag. So yeah, I'll send those articles in the follow-up email next week. I think they're pretty, pretty valuable. So that's a good question. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All, right. All right. Any other questions? And then, yeah, I'll just take this time to say, once again, we offer free 30 minute appointments. If you, especially if you have a very specific question that you'd like help mm -hmm. with, um, we do it all the time at all six of our library branches. Um, you can sign up at the link at the top here where it says for more MCLS classes. I'll also send out that link in the email as well. We call them tech times. Um, and like I said, we do them every week at all of our branches. So no matter where you're tuning in from, uh, we'll, we'll try, to, try to help you through your, your question. It's like okay. some, uh, so, someone's raising their hand. Great. Oh, uh, yes, hi. Mm -hmm. Um, just a quick question because I did have a one-on-one -on -one with Ashley the other day because I have 